2017 is at an end, and 2018 has just begun. Now, we can throw away our Earth Chans and focus on brand new dank memes. But memes aside, this is also the start of a new gaming year. So, get those mental disorder pills ready. 2017 was an amazing year for gaming. From the launch of Nintendo Switch to the bounty of games E3 has promised us, to dead series getting revived, to the Game of the Year awards which you may still be salty about. But get over it. Just be glad Players Unknown Battleground didn't win. With that said, last year has promised a lot of things to get excited about this year, so it's finally time to get ready for that Kingdom Hearts 3 launch, but enough delaying. It's time to get to the point of this video. 2017 brought a lot of surprises with it, mainly the revival of a lot of mascots we thought were either gone for good or was just going to stay as merchandise. So if Bubsy, a character who can pretty much cause the downfall of a company, could make his return after so many years, then surely any old mascot could make a return, right? Actually, I thought that question back when I heard about Bubsy's return. I was thinking about what all mascots I would like to return in a brand new game, and somehow I remembered far back into my childhood, back when I had the original PlayStation, loaded with Spyro, Bubsy 3D, and one other game. And after days of searching, I found that game I remembered so fondly. And that game was Kingsley's Adventure, an outerrated gem that should have gotten more love than it really got. But what is it about this underrated gem that deserves more love than it got? Well, sit back and let me tell you the tale of Kingsley's Adventure. Kingsley's adventure takes place in the magical land known as Fruit Kingdom. All was well until the evil wizard, Bad Custard, stole the queen's spellbook and started wreaking havoc across the land. The four protectors of the kingdom were defeated by Bad Custard and were forced to be his mindless slaves. All hope seemed lost until a small fox cub named Kingsley set out on his adventure to stop the evil wizard. So yeah, my major problem with this game is its story. The story of this game feels very bland and uninspired. I mean, heck, Glover for the Nintendo 64 had a more creative story, which hate me if you will, but I really, really love Glover. I'd stick that glove in my pants and I- But as for Kingsley, the story feels like a last minute addition. Heck, even the game's world doesn't match what the story sets up. The story makes the world sound like it's food based and everyone has some sort of food pun name, but no, the main world isn't based on food or anything of the sort. The game takes on a medieval feel, along with a few other levels of different varieties, such as a pirate bay. The only thing food related in the game is the keys you get to unlock different world areas, which can be shaped like different fruit. But beyond that, the story feels so separated from what it's given in the game. I'm gonna be honest, from everything I've remembered about this game since I first played it years ago, I did not remember a single thing about the story, which shows how much of a presence it has in the actual game, but it could have been done much better. Story aside, one thing I really love about the game is the aesthetics. Everything is so cute and charming. They even took a note from Banjo-Kazooie and had the animals make noises as they talk. The level designs aren't that creative, but I do love the medieval feel of the game. It reminds me of Disney's Robin Hood. Even the music of this game is just charming to listen to as well. My only complaint would have to be the sound effects. It sounds very stocky, like I've heard them a hundred times in other games of the era, though I'll admit it's more of a nitpick, but it's one of the things that really distracts me from the game. Every time I move through the menu or equip a weapon or pick up an item, I just can't help but try to think about what game I've heard them in before. And I believe most of the sound effects are from Tonic Trouble, another childhood game of mine. So, overall, while the game doesn't feel that inspired, it does have a very cute aesthetic that you can't help but love. Now, I think what I loved about this game is how it plays. So, get this. Imagine a cross between Super Mario 64 and Zelda Ocarina of Time. Or, in other words, it's a platformer where you fight with a sword and shield and bow and variety of other items. That being said, the game doesn't control as well as those games. The game... <laughs> the 
The game does use tank controls, which is a very bad sign for most platformers. However, the game is a bit different. Your character can actually turn around quickly, which is more than what you can say about most platformers with tank controls. And on top of that, when your character is in motion, you can actually turn into any direction smoothly, making it easier to navigate tight areas. Also, one blessing this game has is the camera. The camera is always following your character from an almost top-down perspective, so you almost never have to fight the camera while jumping from platform to platform. However, platforming is only a small bit of the game. The game's bigger focus is on the combat, which is a mixed bag. The controls are simple enough, and the game definitely stresses you out to use your shield as enemies can be relentless. But the tank controls do make combat more tedious than it needs to be, such as if you're in a tight corridor and an enemy sinks up behind you, then unless you have somewhere to run forward, one of your hearts will be lost. And God help you! if you get trapped with three or more enemies pummeling down on you. So yeah, the combat in this game isn't great, but it's not unbearable. And the bosses can be a bit of a challenge due to the... And the bosses can be a bit of a challenge due to the controls, but honestly, I feel that the bosses can be dealt with far easier than some of the normal enemies in this game. So. In conclusion, King Lee's Adventure is a cute game that should have gotten more love than it did. I feel like this game could have been a much bigger hit if it was released on a system like the Nintendo 64, but with the recent revival of so many game series and mascots, I can only hope that someone out there has the passion to revive Kingsley for yet another adventure. Thanks for watching this video from Nitro Reviews. If you want to know who this sexy voice is, I run a channel called Game Away. We produce content like software and hardware reviews, playthroughs, and more. You can find it via the bubble somewhere on the screen, but until next time, see you later!